You've been up to a lot. Uh, we're here following you today. Uh, talk a little bit, little bit about what you've been up to. So I actually just got back from Korea two weeks ago. Um, I was playing there. I play pretty much year round. So I play professionally over there in Korea. I was playing for Wuri Bank and we actually just won a championship there. So Man. I'm really happy to bring some hardware home and it always makes it worth it being away from family and being away from home. Um, it's always nice to come back with the championship. Wuri Bank, that's interesting. Talk a little bit about uh, playing in South Korea, what it's all about, and I understand you were in Seoul for the most part and played a little bit out of, out of town. Yeah, so we actually are owned by a bank. Um, the team was owned by a bank, and uh, we lived within Seoul, but we actually played a little bit further south in Asan, uh, just because they pack the gym out there, and there's a lot of community and a lot of children that come to support us out there. So uh, it's a great basketball country. Um, they definitely support their women. We are on TV every game, um, and it's really just fun. I love to travel. I love food. I love to experience new cultures. So. Uh, you always have a little bit of a language barrier, but we had a translator uh, who really made it that much easier for me. I mean, everywhere I go, I've, I've felt very welcomed. Um, that's the best part about using basketball to travel is I've got to experience so many different cultures, meet so many people, um, and it's really a fortunate part of putting a ball in a hoop. Amazing. So you've been uh, kind of all over the place lately. Um, you mentioned you won the title. Uh, that's an amazing accomplishment. You've also been hanging around some other winners. You were right in the mix, NCAA Women's Final Four. I mean, we know it's special for you. You're a Notre Dame alum. You know, give us the dish on what happened. And the young lady, I'll say her name, Arike, uh, she just took the world by storm. You pronounce her last name. I don't want to mess it up. You know her well. <laughs> yeah, I was I was like, look, when you guys win this game on Friday, I'll be there on Sunday for this championship. So uh, you I, knew I knew already. I mean, you, you always have to, you got to put the good omens. You got to put the good, the good spirit in, in the air. So I knew already. And I said, when you guys make this championship, I'll be there on Sunday. Um, and there was 25 maybe 30 alum there and everyone likes to talk about family mentality and likes to talk about the culture of their programs but we always feel it but it was great for everyone to see there everyone to be there and everyone else to see it i mean we were out there supporting them like we won it i was with the trophy i was taking pictures like i won this we saw you we saw you, <laughs> you know, on the gram pick for the gram <laughs> but no i mean for Coach McGraw to win that, I was so happy for her, um, especially with the past five or six years of us making the Final Four and never being able to finish it. Um, I was so happy for those girls to be able to do that. And I mean, for Enrique to hit two game winners back to back, that's not only great for Notre Dame, that's great for women's basketball. I mean, the women's Final Four was more exciting than the men's. So just to be able to put us on the map and make sure that people continue to talk about us. Um, and of course, for them to talk about Notre Dame is even that much better. <laughs> now you mentioned this is a longer off season for you because the Korean season was shorter, which is great. You know, we get to capture you here. Um, what are some of the things you've been working on? You know, we caught you in the workout. Uh, what are you trying to do right now in the off season to prepare for the upcoming WNBA season, which is like just about a month away? So the crazy part is we say a longer off season, which is still only four weeks for me. Um, but it's always difficult playing year round is because especially with your training, you're trying to find a balance between I'm always in season and trying to get better. Um, and so with these four couple weeks that I have in between um, my seasons, I'm really just trying to focus on individual muscles, a lot of balance work, a lot of core work. Um, that's really getting that stability is my biggest issue right now. Um, and then that translates into the game um, in so many different ways. Um, a lot of things also for women and, and given my past ACL injury is always that stability. And um, so whether it's I'm working on single leg stuff or the core, like I mentioned, um, always just trying to get better. Um, and that's, that's really the biggest thing for me because I use my season in Korea to get better on the court. So now it's just using these four weeks to help my body recover and refocus for the next season. Now you guys are, I mean, you guys have been on the map for a while. Uh, Coach McGraw, the best name I think in college basketball, <laughs> Muffet McGraw. Um, there's 40% of the women, uh, the coaches in NCAA are women. Um, I know, like you said, it was definitely the ratings um, were great. People, the buzz was great about the women's final four. Uh, we hope it can carry on throughout the whole season and continue to grow. But in terms of uh, coaching, 
essentially. How do we get more women involved in that? I mean, it's 40% right now. I think that number should be higher, especially coaching women's basketball. I definitely agree. Um, I definitely think that there should be more opportunity for women to coach um, other women. And for Coach McGraw to win the championship, and not only is she the only female coach in the Final Four, her whole staff is women. Um, so she has a great staff of three other female assistant coaches as well. So for them to do that um, sparks that conversation. And that's how you start things is with conversation. And I know I want to coach when I'm finished playing. Um, I was going to ask you that. Yeah. <laughs> I actually, I really want to coach um, at the collegiate level specifically, but I would love to coach when I'm finished playing. So to be able to have mentors and to have people to look up to, like Coach McGraw, like Neil, like CO, and like Beth, um, coaches of Notre Dame, um, have been amazing um, and I will continue to tug and pull at them as much as I need to get information on, on how to up that number and if it's just by me coaching myself or helping pull other female athletes when they're finished to coach um, anything we can do um, to really increase that number is amazing. Now obviously the playing of the women's game has you know gone up like leaps and bounds the last few years you have so many great players in the WNBA. But what about women's sports? I mean, I'm sure you, you face a lot of criticism, a lot of uh, negativity. I see it on uh, social media as well, and I try to hit back at people and say, no, no, you need to watch this. The, the women are more fundamental. Uh, you know, they're team-oriented. Uh, they're skilled. They're dunking now. I mean, Letitia, you know, we have here, um, you know, can throw down already a viral sensation. But what do we do to get people to understand how good uh, women's basketball is and can be it still has a lot of room to rise definitely agree I think the big thing is exposure um, and having events like this final four and like Notre Dame and Enrique given that spark I mean being on the Ellen show um, that's that's exposure outside of the basketball world and I think that's really how it starts you need people to watch us play um, a lot of people are like oh they always talk about women's basketball until they actually finally see a game and I'm not talking you flip on the channel and someone's beating someone I'm talking you watch a real game um, I mean, you'll fall in love with it. This, we play basketball how basketball is supposed to be played. Um, we play in the whole game. All 40 minutes is being played the hardest. Um, and I think that if they just give it a chance, um, we'll fall in love with it. All right, well, thank you so much for your time. Natalie and Sean were here. Your fans are out there. Canada's watching you. The world's watching you. Let them know what's going on. Natalie Chanwa signing out with On Point And just really thanks for the support. And uh, always go Canada. And you know I don't have to tell you, Natalie is on point.